Hi Tyler, Oceana here with G3 Agency with your free website audit for, for statewide concrete in Napa, California. In this free SEO website audit provided by G3 Agency, I'm going to show you three to four things that you can do to get statewide concrete in front of the people that are searching for concrete refinishing services in the Bay Area. Uh, like I said on the phone, I don't expect anything in return for this video. Um, I'm really trying to educate locally owned and uh, family owned type business owners on uh, what they have, the choices that they have when it comes to growing their business. Um, this is something that I do professionally. So my, um, my professional opinion, I will be, I will be using to make this video for you. Um, and I'm just going to do my best to explain it in um, terms that are understandable. And um, I'm just going to give it to you straight. So Okay, so the first thing that I always look for on a website when I do a website audit is a big click to call phone number up at the top. Um, and I don't see your t your phone number at all What in the area that we call above the fold, which is before you scroll down at all. Um, and that's an important part of um, uh, basically it's going to help once people are on your website, getting them to actually call you. Uh, because it doesn't do you much good if they come to your site and they don't call. Um, so I would definitely add a click to call phone number and I like that you have what's called a sticky bar up here. This is known as sticky meaning that it stays there. Sorry, I'm getting a bunch of notifications. Um, uh, put my phone on silence. So that'll help a little bit. Um, so um, having this stay here while you go down the page is great. I would add your phone number and make it a click to call so that people can just tap on it when they're on their phone and it'll pull up their, um, their phone. Uh, I think that this is beautiful. You do some really good work here. So, um, okay. So the next thing is content. How much, how many words are on your homepage and your other pages, of course, and are they, uh, relevant? Do they, accurately describe the things that you do and the area in which you do it. And um, I've noticed that it was kind of hard to figure out exactly what your service area was. And um, if I can't figure it out, you betcha your, your potential customers are also confused. So I would definitely add service area. I know it says statewide, but you know, California is a huge state. Um, and um, I even was not sure if you really, you know, it's called statewide, but do you really um, serve the whole state? Then you might want to make that very clear for your audience here. And then um, if I right click on an image and I click save image as, here's a fun little um, thing. And actually this one's not quite saved like an image usually is. This tells me it's saved in a section as a background. Um, which you would probably know uh, nothing about, <laughs> um, but here we go. This one should be good. Okay, save image as. I can see this was saved as surfaceprep.jpg. So um, that's not super helpful. What you want to do is actually save all these images again, but save them specifically as key phrases that people are actually typing into Google when they're looking for your services in your service area. So for example, concrete polishing, Los, uh, not Los Angeles. Well, maybe you do serve Los Angeles. That's near me. So that's where I went, uh, in my mind first, but, um, you know, concrete polishing San Francisco, for example, would be a good one to go after if there's service, uh, if there's search volume for that. And I'm going to help you find, um, I'm going to show you how to find those key phrases people are typing in and also show you a couple that you might be interested in using yourself. Um, and then uh, for the amount of words on your homepage and on your other pages, we suggest to our clients that they have at least 3,000 words on their homepage and 1,500 or more on the other pages. Um, I know that sounds like a lot, but Google really loves content. And if you have lots of content on your site about what you do, where you do it, how you do it, that is going to help Google see you as an expert in your field and it's going to help with your visibility for sure. Okay, so if I throw your in uh, your information in here, this is a tool called Arifs or Hrefs. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know how to use it. I don't know how to say the name. Um, so uh, this tool gives me an in-depth look into how a website's performing. So it's one thing for it to look pretty. It's another thing for it to function. I'm sure you understand that. 
And so um, your UR score and DR scores are two metrics that are very important. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Um, <laughs> very important. Your UR score is basically how trustworthy Google thinks that this exact web page is. So in this case, your home page. Um, and then your DR score is the same, but for your entire website as a whole. And what I'm seeing here is a real lack of credibility with Google, meaning that um, at this point, no matter how pretty the words are on your page, no matter how relevant you seem to a person logically, Google's not going to be showing you to anybody because um, it just doesn't think that you're very legitimate according to these numbers. And how you get these numbers up is with backlinks and referring domains. Um, so a backlink is any link that goes from another website back to your website. Um, so if someone clicked on it, they would go to your site. And a referring domain is any website that has at least one of those links on it. So you've got two different websites out there on the internet somewhere pointing to your site a total of 17 times, uh, which is a good start. But you definitely want to increase this number, and that's going to help to increase this. Be careful. I will give you a little warning. When you're going out to get these websites, finding sites to point to your site, um, you want to make sure that those sites that are pointing to your site are relevant to your industry. If you can draw a logical conclusion as to how they're related, right? So another business in your local area or another business that does home remodeling type, you know, um, home improvement stuff, that makes sense. Even a supplier, that makes sense. If you can't draw a logical conclusion between the two sites though, it's probably not a good site. And then on top of that, you wanna make sure that your site, the site's DR score is higher than yours, which is not difficult at this point, but you wanna go for as high DR scores as possible because that's gonna loan you more credibility from that other site. It's very much a popularity contest. And if you get a vote from or a backlink from a, a site that has a lot of credibility, that's going to loan you a lot of credibility as well. So you want to look for sites that have a high DR score. And I can actually see the two different um, sites that you have currently. Uh, Brass Indico 7 sje squarespacecom You may recognize this or you may not but it's got a DR score of zero. So that one's definitely not very helpful for you. And then this one here, ethiopiannewstoday.com, probably super random, not very related to what you do. And it's DR score is still what I would call low. I really like to go after like 30 and above. That seems to be helpful. Okay, so now we're getting into um, the keywords. This is kind of fun. This is one of my favorite things. It's kind of like Easter egg hunting for me. Um, so um, I typed in the areas that are near your your base there in Napa. And um, I also searched for concrete. So I, I went down this list here of different words that are um, people are searching. And I was able to come up with these couple here. So this one, Concrete Polishing Bay Area. I want you to pay attention to four different things here. So first thing is it has something that you do, concrete polishing. The second thing is an area that you do it in, Bay Area, right? The third thing is the volume. This is how many people are typing this into Google on average each month. So 30 people on average every month are typing this exact phrase, Concrete Polishing Bay Area. Um, and it's got a KD, this is the fourth metric, KD stands for keyword difficulty of eight. Keyword difficulty is on a scale from zero to 100. How difficult does this tool, Arifs, think it would be to get to the first page of Google? Um, now, a, a low score like eight, that sounds extremely low. Uh, out of 100, it, it definitely is. Um, but I want you to understand that this is um, still going to take time. This isn't going to happen overnight. Even a score of zero KD wouldn't happen overnight because that's simply not how SEO works. SEO is about building trust with Google and showing Google that you're an expert and that you're the right choice to show in front of searchers, right? So it takes a little bit of time, but um, Google can be your best friend once you're up there. Um, and then we have the same thing, but um, basically the same thing because it's San Francisco is the same place, right? But it's not spelled the same, Bay Area and San Francisco. So you've got a whole other 20 people searching for that each month. It's got even a lower KD than the other one. Um, now, mind you, there's not a whole lot of 
um, volume for uh, po concrete polishing, concrete roof refinishing. Um, as you can see here, if I click refinishing, you've got 10 people typing concrete floor refinishing con uh, San Francisco. That's another one that you could go after, but the volume is super low. So, um, you know, we'd need to do more research before I say whether or not this would be, um, I think, a, a good uh, investment for you to make, I, whether it's time investment or if it's a money investment, perhaps having somebody else do it for you. But um, the volume is very low, so I just want to warn you about that. Um, if it were higher, I'd say, yeah, this is great, go for it. Um, but with these numbers, it's just a little bit on the edge, and it's going to have more to do with, you know, how far are you willing to travel? How much of a... Um, how much of a profit do you make? You know, if your profit's 30%, it's, you're going to need more volume. But if it's 50%, maybe, maybe it's enough um, that you could still see a positive um, ROI, return on investment, for something like this. So I just um, let, letting you know the, the volume's lower than with a lot of the other search that I do. Um, but um, it could be worth it depending on how much you make for each job and that'll just you know that would be something that if you want help figuring that out I'd be happy to help you um, you know if it's not a good choice for you I don't want you to go after it because that you know I'm, I'm all about helping small businesses not about getting them to spend money that's not going to help them that's just not where I'm that's that's not what I do um, <laughs> okay so now um, if we type in concrete polishing Bay Area like um, I think it was 30 people do each month um, we can see this is what they would get when they search that. First comes the ads and people are paying money to show up here. Um, and if I clicked, they would pay more money to, to be clicked on. But um, that's not, it doesn't matter too much. Most people actually just scroll right past those anyway. And then we have the um, citations area or the map pack. I call it the citations area because in my brain that's what it is because in order to get up into the map pack, you need citations. And what that is, is it's listings all over the internet, different directories, uh, Yelp, Yext, City Star, White Pages, Yellow Pages, etc. Uh, basically, you wanna take your name, address, and phone number, the same way that it's spelled on your Google My Business, and make sure that um, just to plaster it all over the internet on those different directories. And that's another way to lend yourself some credibility from the internet and end up up here, which is very cool, but not as cool as showing up right here. Um, this is the number one organic result. This is the one that gets about 30% of all the visitors. So a little less than 10 visitors a month from this specific keyword would probably be going to this one. Um, the first one gets 30%, second one gets about 20 and the third one gets about 15 percent so we're going to be looking at like four or five visitors from this this is why i was saying this this volume is very low usually you know if it was a hundred people searching for that every month this one would expect to get about 15 visitors that's going to be a little bit more you know but you could still get a job or two probably from sitting even right here um maybe even a handful of jobs every month if you were sitting up in that top spot so there is there is hope there um, but it's just uh, it's just gonna depend on like I said your profit margins so um, now if we go into their site these are the people that are sitting in that third position we can look at it and basically say what is it that they're doing right what can we do like them but then also how can we get past them and get ahead of them so I'm looking at the amount of con content they have on their site. It's more than you have, but it's still definitely not that 3,000 minimum. And then if I right click Save Image As, I can see that they are not taking advantage of that keyword, um, saving their images as keywords. So that's another way we can get ahead. And then here we can see the amount of backlinks and referring domains we would probably have to surpass in order to show up ahead of them. Um, that is really all the time that I have. I can't upload a, a YouTube video if it's over 15 minutes, so I'll have to cut it a little bit short here. If you have any questions, I would be absolutely happy to answer them. And I look forward to your feedback on whether or not you found this video helpful and informative. Um, thank you so much and have a wonderful day.